So we've just gotten off St. Pancras Station, King's Cross. And right next to it, there's this really awesome hotel. I mean, look at this architecture, you guys. Super Victorian. What's not Victorian is that. But on the bright side, literally, you'd never lose your car if you had a pink Lamborghini to chase after, right? Okay, now we've reached where I want to take you. We're going right now into the British Library. Now this place is super cool and I don't think I'll be able to talk inside, so I'll do some uh, recording after. But take a look at this. All of inside there is full of books. And I think that's awesome. There's like literally never a dull moment when you come in here. So we're gonna go inside and check out what's inside the library. So inside the British Library, there's this beautiful foyer that leads to this really awesome room. Now in here, there's all sorts of old books old notebooks from scientists. I mean, look at this. This is an old astronomy chart of like how the planets orbit and that sort of stuff. It's so cool. And then the amount of illuminated manuscripts that are in here. The video doesn't do a really good job of showing you how impressive all of these are. And every time you go visit, there's usually a new page to look at because if you display the same old page, then it ages way too fast. And this book was really cool because it was really thick. And then I got to see the Magna Carta. Now the Magna Carta was written in 1215 and this is one of the four copies left. It's huge in UK lore because basically what it did was take away the power from the king. And then there were these really cool books from East Asia and Southeast Asia. And I found it really cool that there was a book that they made that didn't need a binding. And it also reminded me of a bunch of really cool storybooks from when I was a kid. And there's even the Quran there. Look how beautiful this stuff is. Now to caveat, I don't know how the British Library got all of these things. I know that the British libraries and museums are notorious for having stolen goods and artifacts that belong to other countries, so I don't want to get into any of that. I'm just appreciating the art. Like this original book from William Shakespeare. How cool is it to see an original? And check this out. This is an original music piece from Mozart. What? and this huge wall of books that just show you how old and cool this is. Now you can get behind these glass walls if you're a student or if you have an actual need to see one of these really old manuscripts. So as you can see, there's so much really cool stuff inside there. I mean, there's all sorts of books that we could have also gone to see but it's a little bit weird trying to avoid people and it's like no super happy hour at the library. So now we're gonna go on to the next very cool spot I'd like to show you in London that you can do for free. So that's our boat that we just got off. Now, I'm gonna go show you one of the cooler new things here that's popped up in London. This is really, really cool and we've gotta go see it. So. Let's get there. As you can see, all of this architecture has popped up in the very recent time. That noise is the river. And you see, we're on the Thames. Thames down there, river up here. So we're gonna walk through this area and you see all these pointies at the top. Those pointies are to keep the birds out. Otherwise, the birds like to come down here. They like to steal your food and all sorts of other things. Maybe poop on you. Let's go see what's in front of me. Battersea Power Station. Long ago, this actually used to be a power station, which you can see by the pointies in the air, but it's not that today. Whatever could it be? What are you gonna stick in a city with 20 million people or a billion people, which is what London is, I think. Well, shops, of course. 
it's hard for the camera to pick it up, but this building is massive, you guys. Check this out. So inside, we can still see a bunch of the original walls up here. And this is why I like it. Because they tried to keep as much of a structurally sound and then, you know, just put in new stuff around it. So this place just opened, like, literally and now. Um, I think it's been open for about two years. But we're going to go down here, and I'm going to show you the history of Oh, sorry. I'm going to show you more of the history of this place. Because I think it's one of the coolest things about London. Now, I mentioned London is like 20 million people in it. In order to give power to those 20 million people, there's had to have been a load of engineering. Check out this thing. So in here, all of the circuit breakers used to live in here. Isn't that cool? This is from like the 1950s. So post-World War II. And then here, yeah, you can see the 2022, it opened on October 14th. 2023 got really busy. 2017, you can see they started to refurbish it. And all of these very cool historical facts. So this is what it used to look like back in the 80s. This, the, you can see the Thames River here. There we go, Shadow. Shadow Thames River here. Shadow Battery Power Station. Some other stuff. And then all entirely in here. Oh, this is cool. Check this out. So all in here in this building, it's for free and you can learn more about this power station and all of these really cool things on how it used to be and now the culture that's all around it. And I find it really cool that people pay loads of money in London City when all of this is just sitting here for us to explore. So let's follow the sign and explore more. I forgot to tell you one thing about this place. So. They also have washrooms. So if you need to find a washroom, you're in the right place. So there's this thing called Lift 109. Now, if you want to pay an entry fee and go all the way up to one of those towers, you can do it. I don't want to do that, but up to you. You can do it. They have some pretty sick swag though. Look at all this swag. Penguin. Lots of really, really cool stuff. Okay, it kind of looks like it'd be cool to go up. It's 20 pounds, which isn't bad, but I'm just really not in the mood to spend money to do stuff. Just kind of want to walk around because I'm showing you the London that I like and the London that I like is not to spend money everywhere because it doesn't grow on trees. This is just nice and nice and relaxing. You also run into things like this where you have artists displaying their, their art. And I really like it. Like here we have bumblebees. I mean, who doesn't like bumblebees and flamingos, you guys? Flamingo with a crown. Appreciation time. Okay, now we're gonna go. I'm kind of stuck on this floor. I don't know how to get down. Oh, there they are, okay. They've designed this area really, really good. So it makes you like walk the entire distance of the mall. There's no escape halfway down. So let's go. I mean, check out that sign up there, you guys. Dramatic zoom. That's cool. Let's go see more art. This is so cool. I don't know who Flamingo Artist is, but She's awesome, he's awesome, they're awesome, whatever. Human's awesome. Look, Pavel Royale, Peacock. I love this, look, Peacock with a crown. 
and jewels for a mere price of 7,000 British pounds. But hey, I love this. Oh, hey, it's Tiffany and she loves painting. That's the artist. I mean, if an artist is gonna do a high kick in Converse in the middle of the street, I'm so in. Okay, now we are gonna go head out and I'm gonna take you to the other part of what I wanna show you because we're not done yet. We're approaching this really cool street that I like. Now, you may have seen all of this stuff from other travel vloggers, but I guarantee you haven't seen this perspective of it. So we're walking right now towards Hyde Park. Now this part of the town is called Chelsea. And Chelsea is probably like where it's, London is most viewed in North American TV shows and that sort of stuff. The cost of living in this area though is really, really expensive. And you usually have to have a really good job or a lot of money in the bank from your relatives and just like inherent wealth in order to live here because it's kind of expensive. That said, it's also really nice because there's really cool stuff around here. So we're now going down one of the coolest streets in Chelsea. So every building here is like literally the same. I don't know how you would find your place if you had all of this beer and then you had to go figure out where you lived. I mean, that's pretty epic, right? Maybe the other tree needed this sign. So you can see how the cars here have changed a little bit. And it's really just to match the style of living in this area. So we have a lot of like Bentleys and Mercedes and Rolls Royce, Volkswagen here and there. But look how these, like look at the roofs of these buildings. It's just so cool around here. Ahead of us, we see a little flower tree. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. That we're gonna go walk up to. Flower trees. I like these little guys. Flower tree. Okay. We are now entering Sloan Square. It's called that probably because of the train station, maybe. But it's also not really a square. It's kind of a, I don't know, a rectangle, I think. So we're gonna try to cross. Oh, look, guys, more blue signs. Sir Herbert Tree lived here. Sir Charles Wentworth Dilk lived here. So much history. So what happens when you have a blue sign on your house? Well, there's this thing that we have in the UK called the National Trust. And the National Trust helps to preserve old monuments and that sort of stuff. So sometimes you get a grant if you need to help preserve it. Sometimes there will be different building code restrictions that you need to adhere to, just to make sure that we preserve the history because what is life without history? So we've now reached the most expensive part of the street. And if you know London, then you probably know that we're very near Harrods. Now, if you don't know London, you're like, well, what's Harrods? Harrods is this department store, if you will even use that word. Let's use it loosely. It's a store with a lot of other mini stores in it, and they sell like very high class upper brand stuff. So like Dior, for example, would be one of the cheaper brands. So if you're super into fashion or trying to find like a rare piece of clothes, probably is in Harrods. They also have a really cool grocery store at the bottom area. You know, it's way overpriced, but it's also kind of cool just to go into the grocery store area and check it out. It's also free. So I think we're gonna go check that out and then let's go see it. So these are all of the things that you can go in the Harrods with. They have perfume, you can get your hair done, there's kid stuff, there's bed stuff, there's man stuff, woman stuff, beauty stuff, everything stuff. Or if you're like me, you can just come here and appreciate the really cool elevator system. Now you have to check this escalator system out. It's one of the coolest ones ever. Look at all of the activities on the ceiling. Is 
Isn't this cool? This is like Egypt floor. And there's just like designs all over here. Isn't this cool? I love it. <laughs> There's feet on this one. Check out all of those feet. Oh, you can almost see where we're going. So we're going to the very top because it's a really cool thing at the very top of Herod's. Almost there. A really cool mural. Appreciation time. Okay, check out this ceiling. We have another art mural, you guys. Now, theoretically, if one had the right bougie power, you could walk up these stairs and present something to all the people coming down the escalators. I don't know what that would be, but it'd probably be pretty cool. In this area, there's like this really cool grocery store with a lot of fancy stuff. We're trying to find that. Maybe we found it. Food hall. Food hall. Focus. There we go. Food hall. Oh, yay, we found it. So in here is all sorts of food. And depending on what they're selling, I may have to get some because we haven't eaten yet. Check this out. So we have all sorts of fresh stuff. We have Samoas. We have ah, bottles of wine. You can get all sorts of like fresh vegetables here. There's all sorts of fresh cuts of meat and stuff down here. Caviar. Things we miss from living in Finland. Admire all of the things that we could get. And over here we have more of like a fresh grab and go. Oh, check out these salads. These look pretty good. Bakery stuff. Check out this cheese. Is it expensive? Like, Harrods has all of this, all of the big brands in here. What about the food? I mean, it can be or it cannot be. Look at all these chocolates. Chocolates. I love all of this really cool detailing in this building. I mean, look at the ceiling. We have more of the tiles up top. And then these really pretty stairs going up somewhere. We're gonna go have some appreciation time. Look how pretty these are. Okay, you can't smell what I smell, but it smells so good. There's like fresh coffee in here. So I'm gonna go find me something to eat for lunch. And then we're gonna get some food. And I'll see you when we go analyze the food that I got and judge my food choices. to the rainy of London, which may change my eating plans. I'm pretty certain I've gotten wet before. Pretty certain that's how I've been sick for the last month and a half. So we're just gonna go put on our big boy pants and continue to go find my eating spot. Now everything that I wanted to show you may not be there because some things don't like rain, but we will get there and you will get to admire London in the rain, which is so much more pretty than London in the sun because the bricks come to life. 
so we've literally just walked about 100 meters from Harrods. And check this out. I don't know if you, the mic picks it up on the sound differences, but you don't hear traffic noise anymore. We're in this massive, massive green park. Now, the thing I like about this green park is that there's parrots. And so we're gonna go try to go parrot hunting, parrot spotting. We're not hunting the parrots. I can hear them. It's just like trying to figure out where they are and to see them. We're also gonna find a bench because I need to show you the food that I got and consume the food I got myself. But in the meantime, just check out how pretty this is. Spring is coming in. I like how you can see all the little spring flowers. Yay! The thing that I like about it though is that in this time of year, it's so green. Now, a lot of the trees that we see here have been here for hundreds of years. Like these trees have stories, you guys. I mean, just imagine what this daffodils next to this tree must have said. Let's listen to the tree. That cherry has been through so much. It's seen so much about life and about history. A lot of these trees have been around from before World War II, whenever the city was uh, really bombed out by the Nazis. So we're gonna go walk around more. Okay, so I found a little park bench to sit and eat by. So it's raining. So we're gonna try to keep my camera out of the rain as much as possible. I got this little cute salad, you guys. So it's like salmon. I have some broccoli in here, I have some edamame, I have some carrots, all of this for eight pounds from Harrods. So I'd say awesome. If you're looking for a little quick lunch, like it's made every day, it looks really, really fresh, highly recommend going there and you know, just grabbing something and then popping over to this park and looking at this waterfall and eating some food. So I'm gonna go do that and then we're gonna go explore for parrots because I think they're here, I can hear them. And this will be my enjoy my lunch view. Okay, so I was just like trying to find a garbage can to put my lunch in, which was actually really, really good. There was no lettuce in the salad, which I think is the worst part of a salad. Just like vegetables and salmons. Anyway, guys, I found something really cool. You have to check this out. I ran to get here. This is awesome. Why do they have swords? Why do they have red fluffies? I'm so confused. I'm gonna have to Google this and see what it is because it's really, really awesome. Like all of these horses just walking down the street. Okay, now I'm gonna be a not horsey and go walk through this little park. that you would not find in any travel tourist book guide thingy. So I'm gonna sign off today. It's raining quite a lot and I don't think my camera's gonna like it anymore. So like, subscribe, and if you wanna see more of this content of like inside your view to London of stuff that doesn't cost you any money to do yet see everything, let me know and I'll make another video like this. Ciao.